uh, in this video, I'm going to continue with this optimization. I've got a couple more videos to make, but I thought I'd tackle this one. Now, I've drawn this out prior to going into it because I thought it's going to be easier and quicker if I draw it out first and then explain the drawing. But I just simply read the problem. A man is in a boat two miles from the nearest point on the coast. Okay, so I drew his boat. He's two miles from the coast. That forms a right angle. He has to go to a point Q located three miles down the coast. Now this distance from A to B is three miles. And one mile inland, which means he has to, once he gets to point B, he has to walk one mile inland at a right angle again. He can row at two miles an hour and walk at four miles an hour. Toward what point on the coast should he row in order to reach point Q in the least time? Okay, so time is going to be the thing that we're going to be optimizing, which means everything that we do has to be in reference to time. So what I do is I just solve the distance equals rate times time for time. So time is equal to the distance over the rate. So now we have to figure out how far he travels. Well, from this first one here, time one, the amount of time he spends rowing is equal to the distance that he rows. I don't know how far down the coast he goes, but he has to go two miles toward the coast. And so this is simply just going to be a matter of Pythagoras theorem. And so the, the square of the hypotenuse is uh, the sum of the squares of the legs. And so the root, the distance that he travels is the root of x squared plus 4. And that comes off of Pythagorean's theorem. That the hypotenuse is the square root of the sum of the squares. And this is divided by, now careful, here we can't forget this. That was the distance that he goes. He takes r. And so he's going to, he moves at a rate r, which is 2 in this case. And then on the flip side of that, he's got time 2 here. But he's got to go a total distance of the square root of 3 minus x squared plus 1 squared is 1. And that's due to this triangle here. But he travels at 4 miles an hour. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try to combine these because his total time taken is T1 plus T2. So T is equal to T1 plus T2, which is going to be the square root of X squared plus 4 over 2 plus square root. And now if I combine the things underneath and just do this algebra here, then this is going to give me X squared minus 6X plus 10 all over 4. Now I want to combine these all under uh, all over one uh, common denominator, and so this is going to be two times the square root of x plus oops, x plus four x squared plus four times this oops, plus 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 the square root of x squared minus, boy, I'm just having a rough time of it tonight. Come on. Minus 6x plus 10 all over 4. All right, so now that's my t. So dt dx. All right, get ready for this. It's going to be fun. All right. I could bring the one quarter out. That's going to help me at least a little bit. And now I need to take the derivative of this first thing. Well, the derivative of that is one half, and then it goes underneath. And so this is going to be um, one half underneath x squared plus four. But my two stays up here as well, times the derivative of what's uh, inside, and that's 2x. So ultimately, this 2 and this 2 are going to cancel. I'm going to keep in that color here. Plus, and now I have to take the derivative of this thing. Well, again, that's simply going to be uh, 1 over 2, and so that's 2 root of oh, all that stuff, 6x plus 10 times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x minus 6.
And now, all of that has to equal zero. And so we set that equal to zero. Now when we do that, this one quarter is just going to kind of go away. If you multiply both sides by four, it goes away, but zero times four is zero. So that's going to cancel out. I'm going to be left with 2x over x, or root x squared plus 4, 4, not 11, uh, plus 2x minus 6 over, whoops, I have a 2 here. And so I can use that to cancel stuff out here. That is not going to be 2x minus 6. That is going to be x minus 3. And then it's going to be the square root of x squared minus 6x plus 10. Okay, to cancel out both sides, all right, I'm going to multiply both sides by the least common multiple. In this case, I'm just going to multiply it by the denominator or the two denominators. And so I'm going to take, I'm going to multiply square root x squared plus 4 and square root x uh, squared minus 6x plus 10. When I do that, I can take that stuff all as one unit, grab that as all as one unit, and I distribute that to each term. Well, 0 times anything is going to be 0, and so I get 0 is equal to. Now, that cancels this, and I have 2x root x squared minus 6x plus 10 plus x minus 3 times. Now that cancels that mess out, and what I'm left with is root x squared plus 4. Okay, so now, uh, the best way to do this, I would think, uh, the best way to do this, I would think, would be to graph these and to see where, the, where they lie as far as that goes, because this is going to be uh, probably quite nasty. Uh, I'm going to have to, to solve this, I would have to subtract and get one on one side, and so if I do that, I'm going to move this one over, and so I get negative 2x root uh, x squared minus 6x plus 10 is equal to x minus 3 times root x squared plus 4. And now I square both sides. Uh, I don't teach this as far as why you can do this, but um, uh, there's a way to prove that this always works for all numbers, and that's just what we're doing is just working with numbers. And so negative 2x squared is going to be 4x squared. The square undoes the root, and so this becomes x squared minus 6x plus 10 is equal to the square of that is x squared uh, minus 6x plus 9 times x squared plus 4. And so when you get all done, you have 4x to the 4th minus 24x cubed plus 40x squared is equal to, uh, this is going to be x to the 4th, and uh, we don't have any you know, others in there, so uh, minus 24, oh, I'm sorry, minus 6, 6x cubed. Squares come from this, these two terms, which is 4x squared, and, uh, and these two terms, which is, so that's going to be a positive 13 x squared. An x term comes from this negative 6x here and that 4 for a negative 24x and then you combine the 4 and the 9 for a positive 36. Getting everything on one side, uh, canceling out and taking care of the, uh, the, the fourth powers, you have 3x to the fourth. Taking care of the thirds, you're going to have a negative 18x to the third, and that'll take care of those. The squares, uh, I'm going to subtract off 13 for 27x squared. That kills the squares. And then I'm going to move over my plus 24x minus 36 equals 0. I can divide through by 3 now. 
So that is factoring every uh, three out of everything minus six x cubed uh, minus nine x squared plus eight uh, x minus twelve is equal to zero. I don't know how to solve this. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to stick this in your calculator. Uh, you should find out that there is in fact only one solution between one and three. The only thing that we're considering right here. Uh, I'm sorry, not one and three. What am I thinking? Let's go up here, back to our, our picture here. Now, we started here at the boat. We can only go over three uh, three miles. And so we're only considering X to be in the neighborhood of zero to three. All right, so that's the possibilities that we have. As I was doing this, I found a mistake, a, a, a simple sign error. Again, uh, my squares here. This should be a positive 27 squared. This should be a positive 9 squared. Okay, and that's going to have everything come out. Okay, so now I go to graph this. And I know that I notice that between 1 and 3, or 0 and 3, it only passes through 1. So if I just go ahead and calculate the 0 anyway, just to be certain here. x equals 1. And so x equals 1 is my solution. Okay, so now you need to test whether or not that's a minimum. And so when you do and when you when you do test it and you do find out in fact that it's a minimum, second uh, derivative test will yield a concave um, uh, a concave up. And so now when you look at this, we're looking at at what point on the coast should he row in order to reach uh, we're looking for a mile down the coast from where he is. So one mile down the coast. And granted, this was a pretty nasty little problem. And this is why, uh, for example, if you if you witnessed um, uh, my light source problem, which is my video previous to this one, uh, you'll notice why I don't use square roots. They just get awful very quickly. So... Uh, I used trig on that one to solve this one. I couldn't escape it. I had to use square roots, but that's not so bad. Eventually, just got down to a point where, yeah, you could probably do it by hand, but that could take a while. So one mile, one mile is our, is our goal here.